Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Proverbs chapter 1, starting at verse 10 through 15, followed by Pat's Two Cents. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy feet from their path, verse 16, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. You know, that's not just dealing. When I read that, I could picture teenagers trying to get other teenagers in trouble with them. But I also picture adults. How many of you watching me right now literally participate in human trafficking directly or indirectly? How many of you participate in drug dealing directly or indirectly? Think about it. Mm-hmm. Be surprised the stuff that we think are horrendous when God is looking at what some of us do and he's looking at it as if it were an abomination and we don't see it because we're not getting our hands dirty. We're on the perimeter just throwing in a few coins in the wishing well hoping things turn out real profitable for us, but we're keeping our hands clean. You think? No, don't even try it. Whatever you are doing to participate in the profit, you are participating in the abomination. You are participating in the crime. If someone gets killed along the way, and they have been murdered in order for this thing to go through successfully, you are a participant in that murder. Now, you may not be caught by the law, but knows all and sees all. What are you doing when people aren't looking? Where is your money going? What are you financing? See, it's not just, oh, come with us and help us rip off that old lady's purse. Come with us, help us rip off that liquor store. Many of you do these crimes so high up that you have no clue or you're in denial. And while you're looking down at the gangbanger, and the local drug dealer, you're not looking in the mirror at the man in the mirror. Because if you look too long at the man in the mirror, the man in the mirror will tell on you. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear what a louse you've become. You don't want to hear how low down and dirty you, you've grown. You would almost sell your mama to the wolves if it would make you another hundred thousand or million dollars. Anything for money. Anything. And then you want to be in and rub elbows with the uppity ups and you want to rub, rub elbows with those that have clout, position, stature in society. And as far as God is concerned, all of y'all are living in the basement. Because you have the idea of a presidential suite 
Oh, no, you can pay for that. But you can't live in the presidential suite that God has for his elect. Because you are too corrupt. There is so much corruption. You have grown numb to it. Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord. Listen to this. I can always tell when God's helping me come up with, with, uh, with examples. Years ago, now I'm describing you. You know who you are. Years ago, I was in a choir and we sang in Springfield, Massachusetts. But we had to stay with families. Different ones of us would be divided, two or three of us for each family. Well, they stuck us <clears throat> with the families that lived on the other side of the wall. I could say the other side of the tracks, but that's too cliche. -ish. This is literally the other side of the wall, the other side of the cow pasture. And when we turned that corner, whoo, the stench slapped you in the face. What the heck is that crap? Oh, that's the cow pasture on the other side of that wall. That wall keeps them from getting out into the community. Well, why does it stink so bad? Well, <laughs> you know. It smelled like cow dung with grass. I mean, it was horrible. Well, they take us over to this family's home. We're staying with them. And we're barely breathing. And we're covering our nose. I mean, we're not trying to be rude. We're, you know, 11th graders. We're just being real. It stinks. And they invite us in and introduce. And, and finally, I had to ask. I said, that smell, that smell, can't you smell it? And you know what they said? What smell? Oh, 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 I can't believe you said that. I can't, I, I'm smelling doo-doo's coming out of my skin. I mean, you don't smell that? That's cow dung, and it is foul. You don't smell it? You know why? They live there so long that they have become numb to their senses. Their senses have become dulled by the over inundation of stench they couldn't smell it they had no clue they said oh we don't smell that you don't smell that cow patch i wanted to say are you lying to me or are you <laughs> you know you pull him you know you pull him pull him my leg yank him a chain what you doing you really don't believe, you really don't smell that? I can barely breathe in without it stopping my breath. Well, listen to this. Some of you have lived in that basement so long. It is full of stench. It is filthy. It's nasty. And it's nasty because of the life you live. Because of what you've chosen to do with your life, with your money, with your strength, with your knowledge, and with your affiliates. And God is looking at you, thinking how foul you've become, how low you've gone. What an abomination you have become with the choices you've made, the connections you've made, locking arms with the uppity ups, making that dope. And you have no idea how bad you stink or how nasty you look in God's eyes. Because people are looking at you like, oh, there's Mr. So-and-so. Yeah upstanding community member. Yeah, right. God is looking at you like the lowest of the low in that basement with rats and varmint and, 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 and you're feeding off of garbage. 
Now, in the human sense, you're living in, you know, you go to these expensive hotels and, and you attend these conferences and you get together with your little cohorts and you have these little private meetings and you scheme and connive and finagle and you make that money, make that money. But God is looking at you as the bum that lives in the basement because you have no heart. You're shrewd. But you're cruel. You're heartless. You don't care how many teenagers get raped to death. You don't care how many kids die from overdoses and from things like like K2 or whatever that crap is that people are getting high off of that's frying their brains. You don't care. You just want to make that quick buck. You're not in there causing the problems. You're standing on the outskirts. Just playing with the money. Playing every little money game you can to keep the problem perpetuated. At their expense, but to your profit. So you think you are better than, and you think you live high while your eyes look low. No, baby. You are the ones in the basement. You and all your cohorts, and you don't know you stink because you have lived that way for years and years. And just like that family couldn't smell that, that mess, you can't smell yourself. And that's the problem. That's why you can't give your heart to the Lord yet. Because you have not gotten enough of your own stench. You have not gotten it up to here of your own filth. The abominable lifestyle you have, you have adopted as your reality for that almighty dollar. That's my God. You pay homage to the almighty dollar. Wow. People's children are being raped, killed, molested, sold into human trafficking, kidnapped, killed, sacrificed, dying from drug addictions, from alcohol, an over influx of alcohol, being thrown a uh, liquor store over here, liquor store over there, liquor store over yonder. Yeah, throw them all in these neighborhoods. People are dying. And you're wanting it so. Now when they die, who knows? You may have all kinds of investments and, and shares in the, in the morticians in your area. And every time somebody dies, Mm-hmm. You're counting up the ducats. But God is counting souls that you have had a hand in destroying. Turn to God before he turns a deaf ear to you. <laughs>